Angles of the eye have of late received a renewed interest secondary to the significant role they play in refractive surgery. Angle kappa is the angle between the visual axis and the pupillary axis. It is clinically very important to the refractive surgeon as patients, especially hyperopes, have a large angle kappa and the center of the pupil is thus no longer the point through which a fovea-centric ray of light passes. Thus, any treatment that is performed, centered on the pupil, results in a decentered ablation. This effect is more pronounced with corrections for astigmatism and higher order aberrations if angle kappa is not compensated for. But what role does angle kappa play for the cataract surgeon? We know that multifocal IOLs work by creating multiple focal points which focus for distance and near. We also know that patients with monofocal IOLs have traditionally been more satisfied with their visual outcome with regard to post-op blurry vision, halos, glare and decreased contrast sensitivity. Multifocal IOLs have been associated with these symptoms despite uneventful surgery with the IOL well centered in the bag. Many factors have been proposed for these phenomena, the most important being a decrease in the intensity of light falling on the retina due to splitting up of incident light into multiple focal points and due to superimposition of the defocused image onto the focused image. But irrespective of these factors being common to all patients, not all patients are equally affected by the symptoms. One of the factors proposed to account for this difference in symptoms is varying degrees of neuroadaptation. Other factors include IOL decentration, retained lens fragments, posterior capsular opacification, poor ocular surface, and post-operative residual refractive error. A lesser studied entity is the angle kappa. Angle kappa is the distance between the center of the pupil and the light reflex. Angle kappa can be measured with a synoptophore or using the OBSCAN 2. The average angle kappa is about plus 5 degrees. So, does angle kappa play a role in multifocal IOLs? Its effect on multifocal IOLs has been evaluated previously by attempting iridoplasty to make the pupil concentric to the center of the IOL. Just as the corneal intercept of the visual axis is used for centration of ablation in LASIK, we attempted to use the angle kappa measurement as an intra-operative guide to center a multifocal IOL. We marked the visual axis using the coaxially sighted light reflex. We then marked the pupillary center and centered a multifocal IOL using the glued IOL technique. Despite the inability to ensure perfect accuracy, we did observe promising results with this technique. We also studied angle kappa in relation to visual satisfaction in multifocal patients and found photic phenomena to have an association with angle kappa. Multifocal IOLs work on either a refractive or a diffractive principle and have either multifocal zones or steps. In an eye with a small angle kappa, the ray of light would be able to pass through the IOL center without disturbance. But in an eye with a large angle kappa, a fovea-centric ray might hit on the edge of the ring, thus giving rise to edge glare effects, etc. This might be severe enough to result in having to explant such an IOL and replace it with a different IOL. A monofocal IOL in an eye with a large angle kappa would not cause as much visual disturbance as a decentered multifocal IOL because of the lack of steps or rings on its surface. There are certain situations where 
Despite best attempts, a centered multifocal IOL in the bag may not be possible in a patient who is desirous of a multifocal. In such a patient, it is possible to perform a glued multifocal IOL and to adjust the centration by adjusting the location of the scleral flaps, sclerotomies and the degree of tuck of individual haptics. In other situations such as microspherophakia, our preferred practice is to do a lensectomy and implant a glued IOL which if multifocal needs to be centered on its rings. It would also be ideal to combine this with ray optics and to be able to center the IOL ideally so that the light ray passes from fixation through the center of the rings to the fovea. In the event of a posterior capsular rent, it is not advisable to place a multifocal IOL in the sulcus for fear of postoperative decentration. If in the bag multifocal IOL is not possible, a glued multifocal IOL may be preferable as the IOL is very stable with no post-operative decentration of the IOL occurring from its intra-op positioning. Our study suggests that there may be an additional role of misalignment between the visual and pupillary axis in the occurrence of photic phenomenon after multifocal IOL implantation in complicated situations as well as more importantly in the routine multifocal IOL patients it is important to take the angle kappa into consideration for IOL centration future advances might also include IOL customization to match the angle kappa of the patients though post-op capsular contraction and IOL rotation would be challenges to be overcome we are currently undertaking a feasibility study for positioning the central ring of the IOL under the visual axis and the results may throw more light on this evolving concept. It is important to focus more research on the association between angle kappa and multifocal IOLs. To conclude, we propose that it may be important to consider angle kappa for all prospective multifocal IOL patients and to avoid multifocal implantation in patients with large angle kappa till the time advances make accurate centering of IOLs possible.